Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Joshua. Welcome to morning service. <laughs> um, the first song that we're going to sing is a great song. Holy, holy, holy. So please stand. <laughs> intro reading and uh, I have an illustration for that but uh, while I was having a shower I, I think because of uh, daylight saving <laughs> I have a, I have an inspiration um, to share um, some stories I wake up this morning then I thought okay uh, last night I told Cindy that we have an extra hour <laughs> <laughs> All our household <laughs> trust me that we all have extra hour today. <laughs> then I woke up, Cindy said, wake up, Josh. <laughs> then I realized, well, my bad. I was wrong. And uh, thank God for uh, my wife that <laughs> wake me up. And uh, because if my wife wasn't there, that I wouldn't be able to hear on time, <laughs> two hours late, <laughs> not just one hour. <laughs> And I thought, wow, that's, that's something. Then, then I, while I was having a shower, there was a moment, there was a time that I could be out of ministry. And uh, you know, like, I don't have to explain to you. There was a time that I totally that wanted to keep up and don't want to go ahead. And all that, 
that's standing me here, I think you too, that it's not because of myself. It's because of us, all together, in the partnership in the gospel, that, that's why we are here and walking forward and moving forward. Do you agree with that? Yep. Okay, so I chose the Philippians chapter 1 from the verse 3. I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you, or making my prayers with, you, with the joy, because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Verse 6, And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. I have a faith in that. And verse 7, It is right for me to feel this way about you all, because I hold you in my heart, for you are all partakers with me of grace, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. I think this is a description of our church family. Let's pray. Dear Father, we thank you for this passage. And praise you for this, that uh, Paul, thanking Philippian church, that have confidence that the work amongst them will be completed in the day of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we know that we are for sure of your glory, but Lord, we know that with your grace and with your mercy, that we have a partnership with each other for gospel. So we will be able to work towards uh, something amazing and something uh, beyond our comprehension. Lord, we thank you and praise you for who you are and what we are and our church family this morning. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please stand again that we're going to sing, Lord, I lift your name on high.
think there should be a law about uh, against having daylight saving and, and school holidays at the same time. It has a depletion of numbers effect. Uh, a few things to announce. Uh, what's happening this week is the Presbyteries at Albion Park, uh, Presbyterian Church. So uh, Joshua will be going to that. So just pray for Presbytery as they do meet um, on the Tuesday. And the combined next combined uh, prayer is the Baptist, uh, <coughs> Baptist at seven pm for people who can get there. Wellbeing Wednesday, once again, walking exercises, followed by the uh, holiday program. So, uh, Friday is a prayer meeting as usual, and next Sunday our church will be having a session <coughs> here. So once again, I guess be praying for the, the elders um, and the elders as well for burying and Craig, as uh, we meet, <coughs> meet together uh, for the service next Sunday. Uh, oh, a couple other things there. Uh, working Bee, next Working Bee is the 15th of October. Uh, Garage Sale Trail is Saturday the 19th of November. And the U Rays will be coming to share with us on 27th of November. So it'll be really great to see them again. Um, we do have an updated uh, newsletter from them, which I'll try and I remember to um, put, it, put it up on the notice board over there. Always enjoy getting the notices. Uh, they send it, never, they haven't missed sending those out each month to us. Um, a couple of things, just to be aware, um, Diane's collecting the, the tea bag tags and the jam <coughs> jam jars. Uh, there's more information on the garage sale. I'll read it out because it's so uh, worth being remembering about the um, what the garage uh, sale is all about. Um, it's our last garage sale of the year and the aim of the garage sale is to give people a way of making or providing things that they have made or owned as part of their tithing. It's an opportunity also for us to evangelise, especially for the local community and we, te we intend to give out some kind of gift which will include one of the Gospels and other things. And we'll need, certainly need lots of people to come and help as much as they can on the day as well. So just keep that on your mind. It's a little way ahead, 9th of November, so put it in the diaries and um, come along and um, be part of it and help out uh, as much as you can. Um, October roster, um, I've got it in front of me here. I'll put it up on the notice board. So you can see uh, who's doing what over the next five Sundays. Um, birthdays, there's a number there. It's been Dicta's second birthday, uh, Karen Huxley, and Sarah Russell. Just out, of, I think the Russells are up at Newcastle visiting uh, Jason and Kim. Yeah, it's done. Pardon? Yeah, it's a bit further off. <laughs> yeah, up there. <laughs> 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 Yeah, they sent. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm not awake. I'm not awake. I'm not asleep. Um, yeah, Craig sent it, the photo, and, and, and Jason and um, Kim really look well and uh, happy there. So they have got to have, have a good time up where they are at Cairns. Let's pray for those three people. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we once again we thank you. We can pray for for part of the people in our. Uh, church family. We pray for Benedicta and Karen and uh, Sarah. We thank you for these three people. We do pray that they continue to feel close to you, that they continue to reach out to you. And we just thank you that they are <coughs> part of the church family. We pray that their birthdays will be a special time for them. In your son's name. Amen. <coughs>
Let's pray for our offering. Dear Father, we thank you for the gift uh, from you. <coughs> Lord, uh, this morning we took your gift to, for your kingdom, Lord. We pray that um, communal management will uh, use this fund wisely. In Jesus' name, Amen. Okay, uh, first Bible reading is from 1 Timothy chapter 3, 1 to 7, and Robert is going to read for us. Timothy chapter 3 beginning at verse 1. This saying is trustworthy. If anyone aspires to the office of overseer, he desires a noble task. Therefore, an overseer must be above reproach, the husband of one wife, sober-minded, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not a drunkard, not violent, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not a lover of money. He must manage his own household well with all dignity, keeping his children submissive. For if someone does not know how to manage his own household, how will he care for God's church? He must not be a recent convert, or he may become puffed up with conceit and fall into the condemn condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must be well thought of by outsiders, so that he may not fall into disgrace, into a snare of the devil. Uh, please stand for the next song, Be On To Your Name. <coughs>
Did it? Uh, time for champions. So that's how faith works. So if we trust God, okay, and our God is stronger than me, and He is the Creator, uh, everything. So He um, He protects us. So that's why we pray, okay, Christian. It's like just an invisible line connecting you wherever you. Invisible line connecting. That's that's a great description. That's right. Invisible line connecting. I learned that. Us. Library, yeah, us <coughs> and God. Invisible line. All right. So we pray. And when I was uh, singing that song, I was remembering that my brother, younger brother, he's now young anymore because he's a minister at the very Presbyterian Church. He's five years younger. When he was in five years old, like. A, Six, seven, and I was a big brother. So whenever he's in trouble, he called me. Because he trusts that I am stronger than his friends or his bullies. So I turn up and say, what's wrong? Then all problems are. And prayer, our prayer life is just a bit like that. We ask God, we talk to God about our prayer life. And I'd like to ask you, Kisa, how's your prayer life going? <laughs> Good. Double thumbs up. Double thumbs up. Mm, 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 mm. Okay, that's great. Good to great to hear that you pray to God and um, you always have an invisible line connecting to God, right? So when we pray, we gotta remember this one. Okay, next slide. And who can read for us? Do you want to try, Christian? Okay. Uh, first. Let that Tapia read first because Tapia read his hand first. So Tapia read five and you read six, okay? For there is one God and there is one meditate, a mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Okay, go for it. Who, who gave himself as a ransom, ransom? For all of which is the test yeah, testimony, testimony yeah. given at the proper time. Proper time. Yeah, well done, well done. Okay, so when we pray, what happens is that we pray in Jesus' name. Jesus take all our prayers to God. So our prayer is connecting to God through Jesus. That's what it says. And Jesus is powerful. And when you pray, you know what happens? It means we're talking to God. Talking to God? When you talk to God, what happens? If God listens? It happens. It happens? What is happening? Um, when we pray, something is happening. Something big is happening. He helps us. I always love this. I was thinking about how can I explain this like, you know, when we pray, it's actually it's happening. We are entering into God's plan. Okay, our plan is always here. God's plan is here. Perfect plan. It's like in a time, 
and it's like you know gravity we always are standing on this land strong when we pray we are entering into God's power kingdom. God's kingdom and God's power and how that happened and I have a brilliant illustration for you too this morning oh, yeah. that's why I have a mystery a oh. mystery bag okay just in case mystery. just in case I uh, and make a mess. I have this one. <clears throat> so when we pray, when we pray, this is happening. Okay, this is the power of God. Okay, the water is the most powerful thing in the world, I believe. Um, I don't know. It's not. It's not. It's not. If you want to talk, raise your hand. Okay. All right. This is us. This is us. Okay. This is <coughs> us. And this is what. God. God's power. Okay, so when you pray, you know what is happening? I will show you. I um, <coughs> make blank. So I can stand here, otherwise I'll get all the light. I don't like attention. <laughs> Alright, just make sure that I don't have... Um, I prepare the mess. <laughs> Alright. When we pray, we are all entering into the power of God. Okay, this is us. So we pray. Just imagine that. And this is the power of God. What are Okay? And I have to do something. You watch this. And uh, this is different. So when we pray, oops. Oops. Okay. So when we pray, did you know how to do that? No, I don't do anything. I just pray. And when you pray, you know what happens? We go out in the plan of God. And those are the, the people who don't pray. They stuck there in their lives. But when we pray, we just the plan and his power. Can you see that? Alright, I thought this paper is stronger than I thought, but uh, anyway, I hope this will show you something. That when we pray, we are entering into God's power. Then he will guide us and lead us, so we can be what? We meant to be in here, right? And uh, let me pray for you. Um, before do that, I'll just make sure that... Okay. Dear Father, we thank you for our champions. Uh, please help them to pray. Please help us to pray. So we can be the people what we're meant to be. And they can be the men, they can be the people what they're meant to be in here, Lord. It's only possible through our prayers, trusting in Jesus as a mediator, that He will bring our prayers to God, that He will answer. Lord, please help us to use the power of God in our life. And Lord, um, please provide them what they need to know you, to grow in your knowledge, and everything, Lord. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Okay, Ying is taking them to the um, <coughs> holiday program. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, activity center is open now. I opened that gate. Yeah. All right. Um, now is the time for our prayer. I'm sure that we have lots and lots of prayer in our mind that we can pray in power of Jesus, then He will answer our prayers. So, whatever in your mind, uh, please pray, and in the moment of silence, then I will finish our prayer. So let's pray. Father God, we just thank you that you are an awesome God, 
and that your power is just um, powerless to us. It's something that we can't comprehend. We thank you, Lord, that with you we are able to bring our prayers to you and that you do answer them and that you're able to, to do great things, Lord, um, in our lives and in the lives of those that we pray for. Father, I just uh, thank you for the birth of little Edwin and uh, thank you, Lord, that um, you uh, enable Christy to, to be there um, in the special care nursery and to be there encouraging and supporting and, and helping to organise things um, for that little baby. And we just thank you for, for that great blessing that she has been um, to Rachel and Ray and uh, to the general family. We just pray that you would be with her and be with others, Lord, in that um, in, in hospitals as they strive to do their best under very difficult circumstances um, at times. And Lord, we just think of those on holidays also. We think of Craig and um, Helen up north in uh, Queensland. We just pray for your blessing upon them and for the time of fellowship that they're having with Jason and Kim. And Lord, we think of our brother Lynn without our Lisa um, getting you know, <coughs> more training there for um, time that they'll be able to share within the PIM programs and we just think of others who may be away at this time. Just pray for blessing upon them, keep them safe Lord and help people Lord to um, be considerate of one another at this time. In Jesus' name. Dear Father, we thank you that uh, you brought us here together for uh, your work, the gospel work, Lord. We thank you uh, for calling us uh, that, that you will be able to have a partnership uh, with you and with our church family, the sharing the gospel with the people, Lord. And just this time that we think of um, tra tragic accident happened a few weeks ago, Lord. And the family will still grieve and um, just pray that through these difficult times they'll find they will they'll find the comfort through you Lord we don't understand why that tragic things happening in this world so many um, injustice and not fair things happening um, we don't have an answer Lord but you do have an answer Lord because the nature of the law is a purpose. <coughs> and uh, please help us to seeking that answer um, through you and your Son Jesus, Lord. So Lord, this morning we thank you that you brought us here together as a family in Christ, that we love each other and let brotherly love continue, Lord. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And the second Bible reading uh, Josie is going to read for us uh, 3, 8 to 16. <coughs> Deacons, likewise, must be dignified, not double-tongued, not addicted to much wine, not greedy for some scum. They must hold the mystery of the faith and with a clear conscience. And let them also be tested first. Then let them serve as deacons if they prove themselves blameless. 
Their wives, wives like wives must be dignified, not slandered, but sober-minded, faithful in all things. Let deacons each be the husbands of one wife, managing their children and their own household well. For those who serve well as deacons gain a good standing for themselves and also great confidence in the faith that is in Christ Jesus. I hope to come to you soon, but I am writing these things to you so that if I delay you may know how one ought to behave in the household of God, which is the church of the living God, a pillar and buttress of the truth. Great indeed, we confess, is the mystery of godliness. He was magnified in the flesh, vindicated by the Spirit, seen by angels, proclaimed among the nations, believed on in the world, taken up in glory. <coughs> We are not ordaining um, uh, elder or deacon today, so it would be a very strange passage, but I think uh, it's a great passage for us. I'm really looking forward to this passage, actually. Let's pray. Dear Father, we thank you for this great passage in front of us, and uh, we pray that you give us wisdom to understand that we are able to truly apply in our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. Did you enjoy the reading? <laughs> yes. Absolutely, absolutely. I think um, um, I preached this passage uh, a couple of times already. And uh, when I look at this passage, it, it, it's different. I think it's an advantage for me and you that we stuck together, I put it that way, stuck together for 12 years and looking at the Bible passage and same passage but in a different way, then I can see that how much I'm growing in the knowledge of God and I hope that we all grew together in the partnership of the gospel, that we grew together. So that's what we um, are looking at, that's what we are up to. Um, how to eat potatoes? I asked you this question before, how to eat potatoes? Okay, how do you eat? Mashed potatoes? Okay, and chips? Baked potatoes. Baked potatoes. Okay, so baked potatoes. Um, would you like to eat with the sugar or salt or chicken salt? Final <laughs> salt. Plain salt. Okay. Um, once it was in the counseling, uh, it was a divorce topic actually. Neither of them is right or wrong. Uh, this is not right and wrong, but they start an argument with because the wife is from the place where the potato should go with the sh sugar and the husband is from the place where it should go salt and they argue with each other, then attack each other, they nearly burn the bridge and that was once a uh, counseling topic and we often talk about our logic, okay, to make the decisions and I think we are logical people, but almost every time, almost every time, when we make decisions, okay, when was your last time you make decisions according to your logic? When we think of it, we make decisions according to our feelings. According to our feelings. Did you know that? And on Welby Wednesday, you probably saw me that if you came to Welby Wednesday, I was sitting with Gary and had a chat, this chat with Gary actually. Ask, ask him about these opinions. We are all different. We all make decisions according to our background and our culture, our upbringing. And um, I believe like eating potato with the salt and sugar, that's a big thing. Because that's the difference in opinions. And I asked, and he agreed with that, so how can we solve the problem in the church family? 
I believe we are all different, right? We are all different. Then if we have a problem, how can we solve the problem? And if we are in the business, it is easy. It's so easy. I think that's the difference between the church and business. If this is a business, you always make decisions according to how much profit you can make. So according to that, you are a useful person or not, you are not a useful person. And if you can make more money with the salt, let's go for salt. And if you make more money with the sugar, let's put more sugar in it. It doesn't matter in the business. We can make decisions according to how much of money you can make. That's the business. And that's a lot of times the people making that decision. And our politicians making that decision according to that. But how about our church? How, we, how do we make a decision? How do we make a decision? How? In the differences in opinions. I believe like if we have 50 people, we have 50 different ideas and opinions. And how we actually make decisions. And I asked Gary. It is so hard, isn't it? And Gary actually, surprisingly, uh, told me that and gave me an answer. And he said that to me, um, look at them. Look at them. Well, on Wednesday, uh, our ladies uh, are packing these boxes, actually. These boxes, it was in the, in the center. And, and he told me that. Just look at them. Doesn't matter, no matter what, they're working harmoniously. I don't know what it is, I don't know what it is, but they're working harmoniously. Not only that period, he doesn't come to church, and he claims he claim himself that he doesn't believe in God, but he still comes to our church, enjoys our fellowship, and he told me that, look at them, they're working harmoniously. Something is powerfully working amongst them. They're working together. And he can see something. I think that's a gospel too. Can you see something that powerfully working amongst us? It's a something the world doesn't have, but we have it. So what is this something? What is this something powerfully working amongst us? Actually, that is what, it, what we are looking at, this passage, through this passage, and this week and the next week. I thought about make big sermon and short. I instead, uh, working, I mean, uh, working holiday, during the holiday time, I can to make two sermons. So this week and next week, and we'll be looking at this is something. What is this something powerfully working amongst us? So let's read verse 14 and 15. I hope to come to you soon, but I am writing these things to you so that if I delay, you may know that how one ought to behave in the household of God, which is the church of the living God, a pillar and buttress of the truth. This is a Paul's goal and his purpose when he wrote this letter to Timothy. I like to show you the, uh, the timeline of the, the letter, uh, the, the, the Ephesian churches. The Ephesian church was planted around AD 52, and it's a, it was a peak on 62 AD. That was brilliant and a loving church and great church. And 95 is a dying church. So between the time that that uh, 62, uh, probably after this one and second Timothy, and after that, uh, we're looking at our church family. Then, then that's that's another sermon series. But that time from the brilliant church, great church to dying church, what's happening? So when is the church no longer a church? And what happened that church? So when something happened in that church and that become dying church, how to repent? How to recover from where they have fallen? 
How to make a church? Church. Come back from this fallen, the dying church. How can we do that? And in Revelation 2, verse 4 and 5 says, But I have this against you, that you have abandoned the love you had at first. Remember, therefore, where you have fallen. Where they have fallen? From the, uh, sorry, from the time 62 AD, that's where the church have fallen. And the 95, their dying church. So remember, therefore, where you have fallen, repent and do the works you did at first. If not, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place, and unless you repent. So, where they have fallen, okay? What kind of work actually they did at first? And the key is in 1 Timothy 3, 14 and 15. Let me read again. I hope to come to you soon, but I'm writing, I'm writing these things to you so that I, if I delay, you may know that how one ought to behave in where? In the household of God. And the chapter 3 is a little about the leaders of the church. And the leadership is so important. It determines actually who we are and what we do in here. To have a healthy leaders, each one of us need to understand what church is actually. So what is the church? What is the church? <coughs> according to Paul, according to the Bible, what is the church? Is it a building used for the public Christian worship? Okay, when is the church no longer a church? Ephesian church was once great church. Once is a great church, great compliment, and it was a church. But later on, in 95, Jesus told them, you are not church anymore, you are dying church. You are dying church, I will remove the lampstand, I will take it away. It is so crucial to understand what church is actually. So, what is the church? Our church is God's household. Church is not a building. You may have heard from someone, this is God's house, make this place holy, sacred. This is a place where we agree to come to worship our God. It is a very nice building, right? It is a nice building. I love it. I love it, the way that we structure it. We need to look after it. But it's nothing more, nothing less. Church is not a building, but it is the household of God, it is family. It is a family. Once the family, once the church loses the family love in them, <coughs> that is not church anymore. That becomes a dying church. When you say about your um, family, do you include your house? No, it is a shelter. Wherever you're living in, it's your shelter. Very essential for us to live, but it is only shelter. Keep us cool, keep us warm. When it's raining, keep us not wet. This is a nice building, a place to meet. But for us as a Christian, it is so crucial to understand this. We don't go to church. We don't go to church. We are the church. We are the church. We are the family. This is what Paul is saying. And this passage about the eldership and the deacons and all that, this is not about the church manual or church polity or church practice, not at all. This is not about how, how to behave in the church building in the corner of Abilia and the Progress Street in Tamo. Not only the church building. This is, we are not limited in the location. Okay, I'll put it this way. If I go to Korea, and if my family is in here, am I not the Jung family? I'm still father, right? Like that, we are not limited in the location. We are the church. 
Please remember that. And household in here is a described as a family. It's the same meaning. And um, so let's look at verse 14 again. I hope to come to you soon, but I'm writing these things to you so that if I delay, you may know that how one ought to behave in the household of God. Household of God. In that household is a family. Whole church is a family. And also in the 4, 5, 12, when he says that he must manage his household. That means family. In verse 5, and if someone does not know how to manage his household, it means his family. It's not talking about the building, isn't it? His household. And the verse 12, again, it's the same thing. Managing their children and their household well. When we choose our leaders, look at their, their household, how to perform as head of family. So it's the same word. Church is a family. It's a big thing. It's a church, it's a family. Where efficient church has fallen? Where? What do they need to repent? What do they need to repent? Because they don't treat each other like a family anymore. The church becomes business. As long as you don't disturb me, I love you. But if you interrupt me, nothing to do with my life. That's not the church. It is never found in the New Testament, church as a building you come to. But it says that wherever you are, you are the church. What that means is wherever you are, you are my family. Wherever I am, I'm a father of John family. We need to see this clearly. We need to understand that we are the family. In that sense, Ephesians 3 is in the peak of the church and it says it's a family. And uh, let me read from Ephesians 3.14. For this reason I bow my knees before the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. You can see that, right? And verse 17, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith that you being rooted and grounded in love. That's a description of family. Amazing thing can only happen in the community. Amazing thing can happen only in the community. That community name is family, the household of God. And I believe, I believe, in a, in a big sense, in a small sense, and this is a something that is a powerfully working amongst us. And the running a business is very, very different from the running a, bit, uh, running a family. Very, very different. The first difference, the big difference between the family and, and the church, I mean family and the business, is that the business is normally 9 to 5. You don't have to think about that when you leave. But family, no, 24-7, wherever you are. Wherever you are, 24-7. That is a family. Sadly, many, 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 many churches, they want to grow big and they quite deliberately adopt the business model of the church to grow a church. And there are so many programs out there for that. Even if it is working, you can grow your church. If there is no sense of family love, grounded in love, rooted in the love of God, we need to reconsider how we go about our church. Even though it is working, if there is no sense of family supporting each other and proud with each other like a family, if we stop loving each other as a God's family, whatever we do, we need to stop right now. 
I'm not saying that this is what Bible says. It is working. But if there is no sense of family, that is not the church anymore. That's what Revelation 2 says. Verse 2, I know your works, your toil. This is what Jesus said to the official church at 95. I know your works and your toil, your patience and endurance and how you cannot bear with those who are evil but have tested those who call themselves apostles and not found them to be false. This is amazing description of, of someone who's doing the great work in the church. And verse 3, I know you are enduring patience and bearing up for my name's sake and you have not grown weary. And this is a time of Nero. It's amazing work, patience, persecutions and all that. But I have this against you that you have abandoned the love you had at first. What that love is? Family love. This is a family love. If you don't treat each other like a family, no. And verse 5 said, Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen. Where they have fallen? We know that, right? Repent. And do the works you did at first. If not, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. Can you see that? Where they have fallen? From family to the business. I believe if we run like family, our church, it's much, much easier. From family to business. I like to remind you that we are not professional Christians. Not that we don't want to do work in the church professionally, efficiently, or effectively. Of course we do want to. But if we really run our church like that, business, make things right, already focusing on that, make all profit more focus instead of family focus. Instead of love, we need to think about how we do our church. What is the most loving to do? What's the most loving thing to do? We are 24-7 family. The church family. Household of God. We are not just family. Turn up on the church on Sunday. No, we are not. We are 24-7 related. So verse 14 and the 15 is the purpose of Paul's statement to Timothy for this dying church, turn back, how you do it, please. Verse 14 says, I hope to come to you soon, but I'm writing these things to you so that I, if I delay, you may know how one ought to behave in the household of God. Household of God. Which is the church of the living God, a pillar and the buttress of the truth. That we need to see this clearly. And what kind of quality to look for the leaders of our church. Once upon a time, there was a time actually, if you haven't been to church long enough, you become an elder. Things like that. No, that's totally wrong. But how do we look for an elder? How do we choose in the household of God? In the previous chapter, last week, we look at these world leaders and pray for them. Why? Because through that, the gospel goes out. And today's passage is about church leaders and church of spiritual oversight for the household of God. And the overseer is the Episcopal and the bishops and presbyter, which means an elder. And the first seven verses about how to choose an elder, and the next seven verses about deacons, its committee of management, and supporting ministry and the serving us and the pastoral and the social welfare ministries. So we will be looking at that passage next week. And that's a lot to cover actually uh, from that. 
actually um, I like to uh, share this one then I will finish my sermon I know there is a lot more uh, the things just focusing on this one for my retirement present uh, you know the life you know when I retire what I am um, expecting from my children don't be shocked you know that but this is a when I think of my family this okay just think about that like 15 years down the track I'm retired and um, this is just making making up story one child turn up say dad here is a BMW convertible okay I'll give you a key hooray but one child turn up and say dad I broke I broke um, I need the money can you can I borrow it from you it's quite possible that happens in the family right right in the two cases would you go would you give your favoritism towards the one who gave me a BMW convertible in the worldly sense definitely yes but if it is a family I don't think so. I don't think so. Do you agree with that? They are all my children. I never give up on them. Because simply, we are family. Often say that we are the Johns. And I believe this is a something powerfully growing amongst us. We don't give a favoritism to us who give, do the right things or nice things to us. No. We are all favorites to each other. We all love each other, no matter what. And that is something growing amongst us and powerfully working amongst us. And I believe that that is something we need to, how do I, how I put it? need to look after it and nurture it because that's a tender plant will grow and die if we don't look after it that brother is us don't forget we are the family let's pray dear father we thank you for Paul just reminding us this morning that we are family we are bought by the blood of Jesus and we call us family, we call us children, your children in here Lord and that's what we are experiencing in this side of eternity Lord we are learning from a patient church once it was a great church because they treat each other like a family, they are family then 30 years later Jesus told them you made everything right in your church, but one thing is wrong. Where is the love for the family? And Jesus said that, warn them, if you don't repent, if you don't go back to the place where you love each other as like a family, I will remove the lampstand. That happened in history. Lord, please help us to learn about it, and please help us to Apply in our lives, Lord, treating each other like a family. Love fervently, love equally. That's not us. That's not us, Lord. But Lord, please, please give us the strength and the wisdom that we treat each other like a family equally and fairly. Please. Please protect our church family in here that we will be able to be the people what we meant to be in here, in Tamil. That people will continue to see that that in that church is something is powerfully working amongst them. And they will they can point out that that's the love. That's the love. And Tamil Presbyterian Church is a family. Lord, we thank you. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I cut a lot of the later part of the sermon. It's a school holiday. I like to keep you a treat. <laughs> but don't expect that next week uh, is a big sermon then. Okay. Uh, please uh, stand that we're going to sing this, I believe.
ที